Kane Farewells, a legal luminary and former parliamentarian. Prime Minister speaks on the impact of climate change and security of the region. Government continues to improve the nation's water supply. Join us as we highlight some of the appointments in the Prime Minister's weekly diary. On Monday, Prime Minister Honorable Alan Shastney attended the official funeral service for Kenneth Foster QC as the country honored his memory by recognizing his service in the field of sports as a footballer, in the courts and legal system as an attorney, and as an elected member of the House of Assembly and Minister of Government. Earlier in the day, the Prime Minister joined fellow ministers and MPs in paying his respects to the family and friends of Mr. Foster as his body lay in state at the House of Parliament. The somber mood of the week continued with news of the death of former Prime Minister of Barbados, the Right Honourable Owen Arthur. Prime Minister Chastney extended condolences to the people of Barbados, noting that Owen Arthur was Barbados' longest-serving Prime Minister from 1994 to 2008. Prime Minister Chastney also spoke about his personal relationship with the former Prime Minister. The government and the people of St. Lucia um, express their deepest condolences to the government and the people of Barbados on the passing of the former Prime Minister Owen Arthur. Our condolences also go out to Prime Minister Arthur's family, his wife and his daughter. I had the opportunity of interacting with uh, Prime Minister Arthur um, at different levels when I was in the private sector and he was the Prime Minister when I was at Air Jamaica. Um, the Prime Minister was instrumental in giving uh, Air Jamaica the distinction of being the national carrier of Barbados to allow us to fly into the Eastern Caribbean. I also worked very closely with Prime Minister Arthur when I came in as the Minister of Tourism on CSME um, and certainly through the current Prime Minister Motley um, when we were doing World Cup cricket. Uh, Prime Minister Arthur is a gentleman that I have the deepest amount of respect for and not only was he a patriot for Barbados, but you can honestly say that he was a consummate patriot for the Caribbean. Um, his leadership role with CSME and what he, the vision that he had in terms of integrating the Caribbean will always be remembered and I, I will always have the greatest amount of respect um, for him. Later in the week, Prime Minister Chastney and the Minister for Infrastructure Honorable Stevenson King met with the Managing Director of the St. Lucia Electricity Services, Mr. Trevor Luizzi, to discuss several issues including electricity rates, street lighting, and legislation regarding the country's energy sector. On Thursday, Prime Minister Chastney joined the week-long virtual discussion at the CARICOM Impact Security Conference 2020 under the theme Securing Our Caribbean Community Within the Era of COVID-19 and Beyond. On day four, Prime Minister Chastney led the discussion on climate change and security, building resilience in small island developing states. The Prime Minister spoke to what COVID-19 can teach us about addressing climate change and in particular, food security. In essence, the, the biggest fallout that we're having from the pandemic and that we've been having with climate change is financial. And that's why what we've been attempting to do as leaders of this region is to, first of all, um, get the OECD to reclassify um, the small island developing states not using per capita GDP. So we think that per capita GDP, um, which uh, is a measurement that's used that determines how much access you're going to have to concessional funds is inadequate. So what we've been arguing with the OECD is to use a vulnerability index to determine the wealth of small island developing states, because there are things which are outside of our ability to be able to affect. The second thing that we've indicated to them is that we feel that there should be a dedicated fund for the SIDS in order to be able to access concessional funds. Thanks to the government of St. Lucia, the Denry North Water Project was finally handed over at a ceremony this week. Prime Minister Chastney joined Minister for Agriculture and Natural Resources, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, 
District Representative Honorable Sean Edward, Mexican Ambassador to St. Lucia, His Excellency Oscar Espaza Vargas, Chairman of WASCO, Mr. Francis Denbo, and other dignitaries for the official ribbon cutting. For decades, the water supply and quality in the Denry Valley has presented major challenges, and the government has been committed to solving the problem. The Denry North Water Project will improve water quantity, quality, and reliability to residents and consumers, whilst also enhancing the sustainability of the potable water system. This will make a huge difference in the quality of life of the people of Denry and the environs. And I could probably say that from the time they come with that project, I was so happy, I was so elated to see everything come on board and everything go through nice and smooth and thank God that today we are able to have water on a regular than it would be like sometimes two weeks without water or three weeks without water and right now there we could have water every single day at our house. Prime Minister Chastney joined the Moroccan Embassy for a reception on the occasion of the ascension to the throne of His Majesty King Mohammed VI. St. Lucia and the OECS have over the past few years deepened the relationship with Morocco and the embassy in St. Lucia covers all OECS member states as well as Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica and the Bahamas. Following the establishment of formal ties, the OECS and Morocco have built a strong relationship expressed through agreements on means of cooperation and mutual assistance in various fields. Prime Minister Chastney conveyed best wishes to Morocco on the occasion and expressed gratitude to the Kingdom of Morocco for its continued support and contribution to the development of the OECS. That was your insight into the Prime Minister's Week. Stay informed each week by checking out the Prime Minister's Weekly Diary. Reporting for the Office of the Prime Minister, I am Nicole MacDonald.